Good evening, Facebook. It's good to see you all tonight. How y'all doing? Today is June 25th. It is Thursday. Another glorious day in, in Michigan. Oh, y'all, if you've never been here, if you've never been to the Lake Michigan coastline, ah, you got to come. You got to visit. It's beautiful today. 71, 73 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. Bright sunshine. Ah, just beautiful. Beautiful. I, thought, I hope you enjoyed your day. Oh, at least half as much as I enjoyed mine today. Mm. Got to have breakfast with a good friend. Turned around and got to have lunch with the Wardens of Grace and start planning reopening of that church. And Well, it's just been a beautiful day. Um, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mick Shriver, and uh, if this is your first time coming to this site, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. In this video, we go over uh, a devotion. Um, we check in with each other. Uh, we say a, a nightly office. We lit, read a little scripture. Um, and we just enjoy each other's company for a little while. We close the day in prayer. And uh, we just lift each other up. All right? And we check in with who's in the room. So, D, hi there. Good to see you. Um, you probably have your husband there next to you, too. Hey, Dick, how you doing? Tonight, I am sharing with you all my favorite beer. I'm a Pennsylvania boy. I'm a transplant to Michigan. Um, I'm not a native Michigander. I'm a nat native Pennsylvanian. And this is Yingling. Can't get it here yet. I'm still torqued off about that. But I've got people who love me very much. And when they go just south of us, anybody who goes south goes through Ohio first. And well, Ohio, you can get it. Just can't get it here. Not yet, anyway. Mmm, nice and cold. The way it should be. I don't see how Europe drinks warm beer. Any of y'all who've been over there and you, know, you tell me about the Hofbrauhauses houses in Germany and stuff like that, I just don't see how you drink warm beer. Yeah, luckily I don't have to. <laughs> I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about what makes us right with God. Okay? And that might be a well, it might seem obvious to some people. It might be a tough call for others, okay? Am I right with God because I, I do the dutiful thing and I go to church when I'm supposed to and I even volunteer? Am I right with God because, well, because I, I, I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't cheat? Um... Well, I try those things anyway. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Am I right with God because I keep the commandments? Am I right with God because I volunteer at the church or with other organizations? Am I right with God because I give a tenth of my income right into the plate, right off the top? Am I right with God because I honor my mother and my father. Well, you know, all those things are, are, are told to me in scriptures, things that I should do. That I should treat other people with respect, um, regardless of their socioeconomic standing, the color of their skin, um, who they love. or I'm supposed to love everybody. No exceptions. And I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to show a special love to those who may not feel very loved, okay? But does that all make me right with God? I was born into a Christian family. We went to church all my life. I don't know a time, well, there was a couple of years during in there when I was in the army and such that I did not attend. But by God's grace, I did find my way back into the church and well am I am I a Christian or am I right with God because I was born into a Christian family you well know, there are lots of families that uh, you get into an older church and you get into a, a a church that's been in a certain town for a long time 
Well, you're bound to have some families in there who, uh, who can trace their lineage back years and years. Maybe to the very founding of that church. And their families were families of, of importance. Is that what makes them, or me, right with God? Is that what qualifies me as a Christ follower? Well, in short, the answer to all of that is no, quite frankly. No, it, it, don't get me wrong. It's, it's good and proper and right to do those things, of course, but that's not what makes me right with God. See, that's, that's the problem that a lot of people had during Christ's time on earth. They, their understanding of, well, if I just follow these rules, if I do what I'm supposed to do, if I follow the law, then I'm in. And I being born a Jew at the time, I am a child of Abraham. I get the stamp on my forehead. I, I get to... Go past go. I uh, collect two hundred dollars. Whatever. And, and Christ came to say, "That's not it, guys. The law was just something that led you to understand your need for grace." Okay, we're not right with God by what family we were born into by very dutifully following all the rules and laws. If we think that today, well, then we're pretty much just as lost as, well, the first century Jews were at the time of Christ. No, it's not by uh, the mark of my family or the good that I do. It's not by that. It's simply by faith. I believe that Christ died for me and he is my way to salvation. That act of him sacrificing himself. That's it. I belong to Christ. All the other stuff is maybe icing on the cake. The way I'm trying to live a good life, but what makes me right in the eyes of God is who I belong to. Not where I came from or even the things that I do. That's what the devotion and the scripture is all centered on tonight, okay? Now, we're going to talk a lot about circumcision and stuff like that. And, and remember, the mark of circumcision to a Jew was the mark of being in, in the right crowd, in the right people, who were God's chosen people. And well, Paul's going to say, that's not it, y'all. I don't know if Paul ever used the word y'all. Eh, who knows? Maybe he was from, oh, I don't know. Maybe he was from Southern Tarshish. Okay. <laughs> the city where Paul's from. Anyway, um, tonight's scripture. Let's see who else is in the room here before we go on there. Gene Tracy is in. Hey, Gene. How you doing? Just, <laughs> just saw you. A nice haircut, preacher. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate that coming from you, buddy. And Nancy's in the room with us. Again, nice. Y'all, it is a nice haircut, isn't it? My wife is very handy with the clippers, isn't she? Um, thank you. Thank you for that. The scripture tonight is taken from Paul's letter to the Christians living in Galatia. A letter to the Galatians. And if you have your Bibles with you and you want to follow along, um, we are in Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 2 through 6. Okay? By the way, if you, if you ever just want to say you, you, you read a book of the Bible, there's only six chapters in the book of Galatians, or the letter. Um, anyway, it's a short book. Chapter 5, verse 2. Listen, I, Paul, tell you that if you go back to the law by being circumcised, Christ does you no good. Again, I warn every man, if you allow yourselves to be circumcised, you must follow all the law. 
If you try to be made right with God through the law, your life with Christ is over. You have left God's grace. But we have the true hope that comes from being made right with God. And by the Spirit, we wait eagerly for this hope. When we are in Christ Jesus, it is not important if we are circumcised or not. The important thing is faith, the kind of faith that works through love. Hmm, pretty straightforward. Let's move to the devotion, okay? The devotion tonight is entitled Faith active in love. At some time in our lives, most of us feel pressured to go along with the group or the leader, our leader. If we display the marks of the group's identity in our social media posts, we hope we'll be accepted. If we wear the right fashions or go to a certain college, maybe others will approve of us. If we follow the leaders, perhaps we'll be safe from bullies at school or crime in the community. But these practices don't make us free, just captive to something or someone else. Paul says in verse 1 of this reading, For freedom Christ has set us free. Then he warns the followers of Christ, not to accept circumcision or uncircumcision, outward signs, as guarantees of security or acceptance. Those marks count for nothing. What makes all the difference is faith working through love. The gracious, self-giving love of God in Christ Jesus is the ground of our confidence and the source of our freedom to love our neighbor as Jesus has commanded. And the prayer for tonight, Holy Spirit, free us to set our hope on your love in Christ Jesus, our true Lord and Savior. Amen. And our prayer concern for tonight is for people being bullied. <laughs> Boy, when I was a kid, there was... There was never any, any thought of such a thing as, as an internet. You didn't have to deal with that. The only bullies we had to face was on a schoolyard. But have y'all ever seen how people are bullied online? It's not good. It's not good. So we turn to our prayer list, our ongoing prayer list that we share. I do have some news for you who... We turn, tune in every night and, well, Patsy has, has been asking us to pray for um, for Alan Chick. And I got word yesterday that uh, Alan did pass. Um, and we, we join together in prayers for his family um, and for Patsy. Jean just wrote down here, as any of you all are, are welcome to, Jean is asking prayers for Stan. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about there, Jean. We will add Stan to the prayer list, okay? Jean for Stan, okay. For Barb's sister recovering from surgery, her sister Joy, for Eleanor's grandson, Eric. D for Joy and her daughter, Anne. We pray for a donor soon to come forward for Jim. TJ for Pat's continued healing. And Allison, you've asked us to pray for your mother, Marla. Vicki for your dad, Larry. And for, um, for Leah, my friend Bruce's wife. And for you too, Bruce. For Zeke's wife, Sue, continuing to heal from her from her broken hip. Sharon, for Bob and Julie. Kelly, for your sons, Adam and Chris, and yes, Christopher. Priscilla, for 
Jay and Nate, and for Nate's mom, Tanya. Amanda, for your grandpa, Charlie. And Jim, you've asked us to join you in prayers for Woody. We do. Gene, my buddy, we've been praying for you and your upcoming um, your upcoming surgery. We pray for a, a steady hand of the surgeon and uh, for the doctors and nurses to have good care of you and for a quick recovery. Barbara, for Dr. Yardumian, who is treating patients here in, at St. John's in Gra Gross Point and Madison Heights. Leah, for your mom, Judy, and Joyce, for your daughter, Mandy. For Lou and Ed's great-grandson, Ralph Edward, who continues to heal. And for Katie's surgery, um, Miss Katie's having knee surgery on July 9th. And I see Jean. Thank you. You just told me when your surgery is coming up. It's also on July 9th. I'll add that right here. Herb. Herb's not doing so well. We heard from Herb's daughter yesterday. Uh, he's still on oxygen. Um, and we we pray for his recovery too. And that he is he is in comfort. We pray for Oh, let's see, Larry's mom, Sally, um, and he told us last night that she is doing well now, and that's beautiful, and we give thanks for that. And, of course, Gene, again, for Stan, we've added him to the list. For Tracy's husband, Rich, as he continues to heal, and for, uh, for Dee's 96-year-old aunt, Cora, still recovering from, from COVID. And as always, everybody, if you wouldn't mind adding to the list, um, those who you pray for, I'm going to ask you tonight for prayers for my mom. Uh, my mom has dementia and a number of other physical ailments that are, um, that are weighing on my father, her, her caregiver, and I pray for them both. We uh, pray for, uh, we have a special part of our prayer list that we set aside and people suffering from cancer or um, going through treatments. Leah, you've asked us to pray for Mikey, Mike for your sister, Lori, Tim for your brother, Mike, Sharon for Jim and Jack, Greg, you've asked us to pray for Randy. I've asked your prayers for Helen and Kathy, you've asked for prayers for Joanne. So, we add them to our, or we continue to pray for them as well. Y'all, this brings us to our time of Compline. It is the last office of the day from the Episcopal tradition. We do the devotion from the uh, from the Lutheran tradition. We do the uh, the office from the Episcopal tradition. And by the way, at the end of the month, this devotional, if you are following along with us and have your own devotional, this one is up at the end of this month. The new ones are at the church. And um, I see Alicia is in the room too. Alicia, uh, just I think she just put them out back outside today. Uh, we had them just inside the office door, but due to rain and wet and stuff, well, it's dried up now, so I think we put them outside. So if you are going by the church and want to pick up your copy, it's over by the office door at Emmanuel. Thursday evening Compline. It is taken from the Book of Common Prayer. For those of you who have a Book of Common Prayer with you, you can follow along. You're welcome to. If you don't, just sit back and relax. And let me lead the prayers for you. Okay? All right. The opening sentence is called the Invitatory. And we pray. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 4. Hey, my cousin is watching. Hey, Ray. Good to see you, man. Psalm 4 says, Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. 
When I call upon the Lord, he will answer me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And the lesson for tonight is taken from Jeremiah. Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. And in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the collect for tonight. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And the Antiphon. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Canticle is the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace, as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And we have, we have uh, people who join us first thing in the morning and use this as part of their morning devotion. So I am honored to be able to do a morning prayer for you guys, okay? Holy Father, thank you for loving me, for walking with me and caring about the smallest details of my life. Fill me with grace, Lord, that I may have the strength to face whatever is before me today. I know not what today will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Please give me your wisdom and fill me with your peace. May I show the same grace to others that you show to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And finally, the blessing for tonight. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you this night and always. Amen and amen. Thank you, everybody. It's been, <clears throat> it's been great spending this time with you. <clears throat> Throat's a little dry. Hmm, I wonder if I have a a remedy for that. <laughs> there we go. I think that'll about do it. It's been great spending this time with you. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. I hope you rest well tonight. Be safe. Be well. Love each other. Love God with all your heart. Good Lord willing, the crick don't rise. I'll see you back here tomorrow night. Good night, Facebook.